Y'all, I think I finally got this electricity thing figured out. Welcome back to my van build. I've been working on my solar array for the last three weeks or so, and I'm gonna be breaking up these videos into two parts. We're gonna install the DC system first, and then we'll do the AC system next week. I purchased the 400 watt solar kit from Renogy, and I purchased two 100 amp hour batteries from Battleborn. I'm also gonna be using a 2000 watt inverter for my AC system that was purchased from Renogy as well. This setup is going to be my ideal setup, and I will say it doesn't come cheap, but I wanted to do it the safest way possible, to the NEC code standard to the best of my ability. And with the nicer materials comes ease of installation, which you'll see later on in the video of like better quality wires versus cheaper wires. A prerequisite for this video, if you haven't seen it already, is my pre-wiring video. So go ahead and check that out. This all looks kind of crazy right now and it needs a lot of cleaning up. But in order for us to start our build, we need to first start from the beginning. So. So the most important thing in your solar array is knowing how much power you need. This was something that took me a pretty long time to research. I was looking into all the appliances I wanted to have, what was going to be DC, AC, etc. And I ended up finding this YouTube channel called Explorers.life, which I'm going to link like their whole playlist on how to do solar because it really was critical in helping me figure out how to just do all the small details of wiring and everything. They ended up designing a solar calculator where you can basically put in all of your appliances and it's gonna spit out what type of array you need. So that's what I ended up using. One of the most important things for me to figure out was what my maximum wattage was gonna be used at once, which usually it's gonna end up being like a Vitamix blender or if you're going for an induction cooktop, that's usually the biggest thing. Both of those run on AC, so all of my calculations and the design of my solar array was kind of based around what wattage my outlets were gonna be drawing. So uh, that's why I ended up going with the 2000 watt inverter because my maximum draw is going to be around 1800 watts at any given time. For everything electrical that I'm gonna have in my van, I ended up deciding that four 100 watt panels and two 100 amp hour lithium ion batteries was going to be the correct sizing for me. So you need to figure out what is best for you and then go from there. But I also feel like a 400 watt, 200 amp hour battery system is really good for an individual person in a van and maybe even a couple if you're designing a van. After doing research on how much power I needed for my van, I started doing research on what products I would wanna buy. And I highly recommend buying made in the USA wiring if you can, and also like marine grade products. A lot of stuff that people use on sailboats works and translates really well for RVs or camper vans. Marine products are also graded to withstand corrosion and weather, so that is very useful for a van as well. And if you think your system is going to be exposed to weather, at all, which it most likely is if you're living in a van. All of the products that I purchased, I will definitely link below. I went with more state-of-the-art products because I wanted to be as safe as possible, especially as a person who has no experience with doing electrical. I didn't want to cut any corners in case I messed anything up. So after all my products arrived, I mounted them in the garage where I think they would fit the best. I did this first because I had to cut a bunch of wires myself and create connections between the batteries and the inverter and everything. Although the Renogy kit comes with some wiring, it doesn't come with all of the wiring. And to be honest, all of the wiring that came in the Renogy kit is extremely rigid and the insulation was really hard to cut. So I ended up purchasing a lot of made in the USA wire from Windy Nation, which I highly recommend. The biggest wire that I'm using in this project is 2 aught. It's extremely flexible. You can even see like right here, this is a 2 aught wire and it can move around really, really easily. You want that flexibility within your system because you don't want your copper stranded wire to be like bending or crimping. And then so from there, after you have everything mounted, you know how long your wires need to be. So now we're gonna make all of our connections between our appliances.
be connecting my batteries in parallel, which means that the amperage will change, but the voltage will stay the same. And since they are 12 volt batteries, it will be a 12 volt system. You wanna make sure that you put the bolt in and then you put a washer and then your lug and then another washer and then the nut at the end. And I'm gonna tighten all this stuff down once I get everything connected. Since I have no experience with doing any of this and it's my first time, I will do my best ex to explain my whole system. One important thing to note, all of my positive and negative connections meet at the bus bars. Bus bars are a really important midway connection for all of your wires to come to so that each appliance isn't directly connected to another thing. It's basically like another layer of protection so that if one of your wires fails, it goes back into the bus bar rather than into the next appliance. That being said, also, every red wire you have or positive wire is going to have two cuts for every connection it goes to because you want to put a fuse on every positive wire. The fuse protects the wire itself. It doesn't protect the appliance that it's going to. If the wire ends up receiving a current that exceeds the amount it can actually take, the circuit will break or the fuse will blow and then you'll just have to replace the fuse and you won't have to replace the wire, which is nice and safe. Well, will you look at that? It's me coming from the future to let you know that my system works and I deleted all of the video from that last clip until now. So we're just gonna have to go through everything else again. Unfortunately, you won't see me getting so excited about my system working and everything working out, but I still really want to go through a whole step by step of everything. It just might feel a little weird and I'm wearing different clothes and it's a couple days in the future, but sorry. Um, it's, God, I'm so annoyed right now. I was looking online to see if I could get my data recovered, but it just costs money and I honestly don't feel like paying the money for it. So y'all are just gonna have to bear with me and we're gonna go over the system like I did last time, but honestly, maybe it'll be better this time because I actually will be able to explain it better than I did in the previous videos. I was feeling kind of insecure about it anyway. <sighs> so we'll pick back up where we left off at the bus bars. So now that I've got all my wire connections set up, we're gonna go over everything. And just for the sake of ease, I'm going to explain all of the connections coming back to the bus bars. This may not necessarily explain the way the current is flowing, but I'm hoping at some point throughout this video, I will explain how the current flows through everything. But this initial explanation is basically just going to show you where everything is, where everything goes, and how everything's just connected together on a basic level. So I have two 100 amp hour batteries in parallel, which will make the system 200 amp hours on a 12 volt system. When you connect in parallel, it changes the amperage, not the voltage. So we have our positive to positive connection and our negative to negative connection. Our positive comes out one end to the bus bar and our negative comes out the other end coming to the bus bar. On the positive end, we have a 250 amp terminal fuse that connects directly to the bus bar. At some point, I'm gonna wanna put an on-off switch on that wire, and then I'll put another fuse between the on-off switch to the bus bar, but the on-off switches were like five week back order, and I didn't have time to wait for that, so I just ended up using the terminal fuse directly to the bus bar for now. The negative side of the battery goes down to the battery only side of the shunt, and on the other side of the shunt, it goes to the negative bus bar, and then the other wire goes to the chassis ground that's gonna be important for the AC system later. These two wires connect up to the positive sides of the battery, and that helps monitor the voltage and the percentage capacity that the battery currently has. I'm not gonna explain how to set that all up because Victron Energy has a really good, easy step-by-step -step guide on how to set it up. So if you buy the one that I bought, I bought the BMV 712 Smart. It also has Bluetooth capabilities where you can monitor your battery from your phone on an app, which is awesome. So that concludes all of the connections from the battery to the bus bars. Next, we're gonna do the controller. So I got the 40 amp MPPT controller from Renogy. It's the one that comes in the 400 watt premium kit. 
You can see here, this is what it looks like from the front and all of the loads and everything that come out of it come from the bottom. So I'm gonna take this off really quick so that we can look at it easier. The main connections that we'll be dealing with on the controller are going to be the PV plus and minus, that's for the solar panels, and battery plus and minus, that's gonna be the connection to the batteries. We're not gonna worry about load plus and minus. It's gonna be visually a little bit more difficult to explain this because I don't have red and black wires but the positive ones are supposed to be red. The Renogy kit just doesn't come with red wire for these connections. The battery negative goes directly to the negative bus bar here. The battery positive goes through a 60 amp breaker, and then it comes up and goes to the positive bus bar. The PV negative is going to come directly out and it's gonna to go to the solar panels. And then the PV positive is going to come up and down into a 20 amp breaker and then it's going to come out to the solar panels also. An important thing to note on the breakers is that these do depend on the current and which direction it's flowing in. For the sake of ease, let's just say that these are our solar panels. So we have our positive solar panel that has our 30 amp fuse on it. It's going to come down. It's going to travel through the 20 amp breaker up and out and go into the controller. The negative side is just gonna go directly into the controller. When it hits the controller, the controller is going to convert it into energy that can be stored into the batteries. So it comes in and then it moves out through the battery and goes into, the negative part goes into the bus bar and then comes into the battery itself. The positive side moves through the bottom of a 60 amp breaker, goes to the bus bar, and then to the battery. So that's how that flow works. It comes in through the panels and out through the battery part. From the bus bars, we have two more connections. We have this positive wire that goes to a 60 amp breaker and then goes to our DC fuse block. This is our negative connection that just goes directly to our DC fuse block. This positive connection goes to a 250 amp ANL fuse and then comes to the positive side of our 2000 watt inverter. This negative wire just goes directly to our 2000 watt inverter. Like I said before, there's a lot of explanations that can be done for how to size your wiring and sizing your fuses. And I will put a bunch of resources down below. It took me a while to figure out like what size fuses and stuff I needed. And I'm definitely not very eloquent with explaining that but there is a certain range in which you need a fuse to be in where it can't be like below a certain amount and it shouldn't be above a certain amount because then it won't trip properly. There are some calculators that you can use and then the Explorers.life playlist that I'm going to link below on how to do things as simple as stripping wire, crimping, lugs, all that stuff has good explanations and calculators on how to size your fuses and wire correctly. The 2000 watt inverter is going to be explained in the next video. I don't have the whole system set up. I actually had it set up, but I took it down so that it wouldn't be confusing for the DC setup. We are going to explain the fuse block later, and I think it's going to be a multiple video thing too because it kind of makes the most sense when you have something to connect it to. I have all of my wires up here that I ran in my pre-wiring video. Something that I didn't explain, which I'll probably explain in another video too, is that you want to distinguish which wires are your positives and your negatives on both ends so that you're connecting positive and negative wire accordingly. It's a lot easier with the wire that's already red and black, but for the ones that are all black, you definitely wanna make sure that you're connecting the same connections on both ends. So that's a pretty basic explanation of my setup. Something I've deduced from connecting everything is that for every wire lug or ring terminal, you wanna have a washer, a locking washer, or a lock nut when you are connecting things really securely. For example, you wanna be sure that you're getting an even distribution of connection on all of your terminals. So we have our bolt, and then we have a washer, our wire lug, another washer, and then our locking nut. The washers help kind of sandwich the lug together so that there's an even distribution on all of the exposed metal. This is especially important when you have multiple ring terminals connecting together so that they can get sandwiched together and make as good of a connection as possible. If you don't have washers, when you're tightening down on the nut, it can end up 
crimping into the wire lug itself, making an indentation, and then wearing away that metal quicker than the rest of the lug. It's important to connect your entire battery system first prior to connecting your solar panels together because if you connect your solar panels directly to your controller without any of the energy having a place to be stored, it can end up burning up your controller, which we obviously don't want to do that. So now that we have all of our battery connections and everything complete, we can set up our solar panels. So I have my four 100 watt solar panels that I'm gonna put on top of my van. I'm connecting them in series parallel, which means that these two are gonna be connected in series, these two are gonna be connected in series, and then this pair and this pair will be connected in parallel and will go into my van. The reason I chose series parallel over series or parallel is because it ends up changing the voltage and the amperage overall to make it lower for both of them. If you connect it in series, your amperage won't change, but your voltage will go up to around 80, 85. I believe that the Renogy controller is rated to around 100 volts, but if you're in colder temperatures, you have the potential of exceeding that voltage and then you can burn up your controller. Same with the amperage. If I were to connect all of those panels in parallel, it would end up being, I think, 40 amps. This controller is rated at 40 amps, so if I go into too cold of temperatures, it'll also burn up the controller. Connecting it in series parallel, though, it'll end up being 40 volts and 10 amps, which are both well below the limits of my controller, which is what I want to be as safe as possible. So I'm going to connect the positive and the negative of these two. And then I'm gonna connect the positive and the negative of these two. And then I'm gonna use these adapter pieces to connect the positive and positive, negative and negative to make the overall system series parallel. And then these connections connect directly to my controller. This one's gonna be my positive one because it has my 10 amp fuse on it. And then it's going to go through my 20 amp breaker into the controller. And then this is my negative, it's gonna go directly into the controller. And then we go check and see if it works. I turn my breakers on, let's see what happens. Sweet. As of right now, the solar panel and battery light should be lit up, so I'm gonna have to figure out why the solar panels are not being detected. Maybe I need to replace the top and the bottom where it comes in and goes out, so I'm gonna try switching that. I'm gonna try putting the connections back in, seeing if maybe the connections in the controller weren't tight enough, and then if it still says that it's not detecting the panels, I'm gonna switch around the breaker wires. So, I've just got my original connections again, same as it was before, and I'm gonna flip on this breaker. And the little sunlight thing is on now, but the, the light's still not lit up. Maybe it just needs a second or something. Okay, so it turns out that maybe one of my connections just weren't that strong. After pulling these out of the controller, the negative one actually seemed a little bit loose. So just double check on your connections before you do anything where you're changing around your system. Yes, I'm so happy that that works. That means that I can finally put these things on top of my van. <laughs> snail on top of my van. How did it get up there? Come on, buddy. This ain't a safe place for a snail. So this is the way I'm gonna mount the solar panels on top. I'm gonna move the brackets over here to the ends so that I can get the solar panels a little bit closer to the fan. But all of the wiring is as close as possible to each other. And then I think I'm gonna try to run the wire down that corner and into the van where the solar is. When you get up here, what you're gonna need is this 3M tape that's gonna go on the brackets for the solar panels. You're gonna need grommets for when you drill holes into the van to run the wires through so that the exposed metal doesn't rub away your insulation. You're gonna want some primer for those holes that you drill. You're gonna need 
your drill bit set to drill the holes. You'll also need your entry gland. You'll have to buy this separately from Renogy if you get the 400 watt kit. You need an impact driver with socket bits so that you can drill the self-tapping screws they provide you in. I brought up the rest of my screw set just in case I gotta switch anything out. And then this is totally a mess but you'll need silicone to cover all of the screw holes that you're putting in. I'm gonna put it around the brackets too as uh, extra glue down on the van. Wow, that is like the worst sentence ever, isn't it? Now that I've got the brackets changed on the solar panels and everything's tightened down, I am going to put my 3M tape onto the bottom of the brackets here and it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna leave the plastic on top until I for sure know exactly where I'm gonna put my solar panels. I still have a little bit of finessing and moving around to do of them because I wanna make sure that my wire is long enough to reach the solar setup inside the van. And I'm also thinking that I wanna have my solar panels set up in a way that it's easy for me to get on top of the van without like stepping on them or getting really close to stepping on them because I have realized I really don't like using ladders. They make me scared and I wanna have a good platform when I get up here to walk around. So this is what I've decided on for my layout on top. The connectors in the middle there, they kind of have to be there because they can't get any longer from the solar panels. Now what I'm gonna do is drill the holes for the entry gland and run the wires through the hole, hook it up into the solar, make sure everything works. And then lastly, I am going to remove the 3M tape and silicone everything down. So I've decided that I'm gonna run the entry gland between these two backlights. The wires will run through here and then down into the solar system. I got paint on my sweatshirt. I am making my last connection, the negative of the solar to the controller again. And then I'm gonna turn the breakers on and I hope to freaking Jesus that this all works cause I'm ready to be done with this project. Feeling good. I'm really hoping, oh, I'm so nervous. Okay. It's taken me like over a month of working every day to get this done and oh my god it feels so good to actually have done it right. <laughs> well we're not done yet, gotta mount everything and then we will officially call this project Finito. I'm gonna turn the panels back off before I mount everything just so I'm not working with live current. The panels are installed. My system is working on a basic level. I know that I have all of my DC appliances that I still need to set up and I will be doing that in another video as well. With electrical, there are so many small parts that go into making an entire system. That's something that I've realized through this entire build so far. And since it's my first time doing it, I may not be doing everything in the most efficient way possible. So for the sake of this video being simple, I'm gonna cut it here. Stay tuned for more of my electrical videos. The next one that I will be doing after this is setting up my AC electrical system for my solar array. It's going to be pretty simple 
simple but super necessary and I think it deserves its own video because it took me such a long time as a novice to figure out how alternating current works. If you have any questions about any of the installation process, if it wasn't detailed enough, please feel free to comment below. I have a lot of information, but especially with like putting the solar panels on top, it was a really windy day. I was super tired and I had a really hard time filming video of me installing the panels to the roof. Personally, I think it's pretty straightforward but I want these videos to be extremely detailed and I wanna be able to answer any of the small questions that you have if you have them. Getting into the cost breakdown of my entire electrical system is a little bit tricky because there are so many components that go into it, so this is just gonna be a very rough ballpark estimate. But for the most basic part of the system, not including the electrical appliances that will be hooked up to my DC, this alone without the AC system was around $3,000. Almost 2,000 of it goes to the batteries. Battleborn lithium batteries are extremely expensive, but they are state of the art, probably the highest quality you can get right now. So I just decided to buy once and cry once with these. Most of the other components, such as the controller and the inverter and everything are within the, you know, 300, 400, 600 range. They don't seem that expensive, but every little thing adds up from all of the nuts and bolts you have to buy to the wiring that you're gonna have to do yourself to the tools you need to crimp your wires and everything, it all adds up. And I would say if you are doing a solar array system with DC and AC, I would try to allot around $5,000 for a really good quality system that has all of the proper fusing, as well as all of the safety components you need to make your system as safe as possible for your van. If you found this video useful, please feel free to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'm super excited to keep going with all of this electrical stuff. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!